Hey witches, Jamie here with the New Witch Academy of Modern Magic. Back for another brand new series I'm starting on the celebrations within witchcraft. So today I want to go over the Wheel of the Year. So the Wheel of the Year was put together by Gerald Gardner, among a few others that are not usually named, brought ancient holidays of several cultures in Europe together to create a continuous wheel of holidays throughout the year that are based on ancient pagan practices, pre-Christian practices. So these are things that they could verify or heard stories about from 2000 years ago. One of the ways that they one of the ways they pulled the holidays together is they looked at folklore. Folklore meaning these are stories told and passed down through families. Not a lot was written down back then. So looking at folklore and what was said about the different rituals or celebrations throughout the European ancient world. Then they looked at historical accounts. So where books were kept or where things were written down. They looked at what celebrations went on that were actually a historical record. Lastly, they used the imagination of the occult to bring in new ideas of what each turning of the wheel could mean for people, how to reflect, how to practice it. Because even though we're bringing in all of these ancient celebrations, our world does not reflect that ancient world at all. Specifically, the land around us, the fact that we don't, we don't grow our own food, most of us. So there is a real disconnect with doing things in the ancient way. So what Gerald Gardner and his team did was bring in these ancient practices and try to modernize them in a way that we could find them helpful to just sync ourselves back with nature. If you find the names hard within the wheel of the year, that's because they are Saxon and Celtic words. So especially being American, I'm not exposed to people from the Isles within greater Europe area. So I have not heard a lot of these names. And I want to encourage you guys that if you don't know the name, there's nothing wrong with looking it up online and say, just type in on like Google how to pronounce and write the holiday name. That'll just help you get used to saying it. That is what I did. I didn't learn them from anybody else. I learned how to say the names from Google, so hopefully Google led me in the right direction. The eight holidays are beginning with the Witch's New Year, Samhain. Samhain is celebrated on Halloween, October 31st. Yule is the winter solstice. Next we have in bulk. This is going to be the first signs of spring happening on February 2nd, Groundhog Day. You can see we're predicting how much more winter we have on Groundhog Day. From in bulk, we move on to Ostara, which is close to the Christian Easter. We're looking at March 20th through the 22nd. After that is the holiday of Beltane. This is May 1st, or what we celebrated as kids as May Day. Not even knowing it was pagan, it's so wonderful. I love thinking about that. After Beltane comes Midsummer. This is the summer solstice, the longest day of the year. I hope I said Yule was the winter solstice and the longest night of the year. I'm not sure if I said that. After Midsummer, we have a holiday called Lunasau. That is the first of the harvest holidays, followed by Mabone, which is the fall equinox where day and night are equal. And from a bone, we go back to the beginning with Samhain. Those are the eight pagan holidays that are celebrated in the witchcraft world today. Some things that you might not know about them. The purpose of the holidays are really to reconnect with nature or natural things. Celebrating is absolutely a preference. You do not have to celebrate any of them. You don't have to learn about them if you don't want to, but the purpose is to bring you in touch with the nature that's around you. Another interesting fact, of course, is that these holidays were not all celebrated by one community of people ever. We are the first community of people to celebrate all these holidays together the way that they're built because Gerald Gardner and his team brought them together and put them into a calendar that we could understand for the modern day. Christian holidays will closely line up with the pagan holidays and this was done so that as they were converting pagans into Christians, the holiday celebrations didn't seem that far off from what they were already doing. It made a smooth transition in, from pagan culture to the Christian culture. The reason that they couldn't change the pagan holidays to fit the Christian culture is because our holidays revolve around things that are going on with the earth. You will find the best resource for learning the holidays, what I think, is the Llewellyn series that they've put together of the eight holiday books. Uh, they are about 10 to $15, depending on when you buy them. Obviously, when it's closer to that holiday, 
they are the full price, but if you buy them in the in-between, they can get down as low as like $7.50. And then buying used books is always good too, but these are excellent references. This is just the Llewellyn Sabbath Essentials. And, and so I, you may have noticed that I don't call the Wheel of the Year and the Holidays, I don't call them Sabbaths. A Sabbath is originally from a religious word and I just choose not to use it. That is my own personal preference. I call the witches' holidays celebrations, holidays, rituals, anything other than a Sabbath. You may notice the correlations or the correspondences for each of the holidays if you get the books that they link to plants, animals, items that might not be in your surrounding area. So I want to urge you guys to take the books for what they are, a historical account of what was happening in our ancient world. Try to turn that so that you can use it in your modern world. I live in Florida, so some of my correspondences is a correspondences are going to be different because I don't experience winter the way people in the north experience winter. I have a lot of palm trees, other people could have aspen trees. These are just small differences or changes that you can notice within your own environment. One of the things I urge you to do is to look into your environment and see how each season grows. Maybe not how, but when things start to grow in your area. Do you live in a place that drops leaves? I do not, so there's not that fall color change for me. So the observation of nature happening all around us is a good exercise without having to really celebrate anything, but just to observe the changes in nature at eight different times in the year. Other things that you can do when a holiday time period arrives is to check out what's at your local farmer's market and see what actually grows in your area. I was surprised to know that pumpkins were really only grown in Central America until the last hundred years and we've turned the pumpkin into something that is not only edible because it didn't used to be but has attached itself to one of the holiday seasons so this is your cue to get out there see what's around you reconnect with nature and consider looking at the eight witches holidays how they're represented in your area if you guys found this video helpful I would love it if you hit the like button if you want to see more like it please hit the subscribe Thank you so much for being here with me. I've enjoyed doing this video and I'm going to do the rest of the eight holidays as the year turns. I hope to see you then. Bye.